the 10 most important tips and tricks for beginning traders. So after the great feedback of my last beginner strategy video, let's do another one with the 10 most important trading tips for new traders. But even if you are already a little bit more intermediate, this video may help you add more consistency in your trading. So first of all, master one setup. It is very, very important that you stop system hopping. Don't think that you will just stumble over a trading system that will make you money from the get go. This is not how trading work or how trading works. You need to understand that no system will work right from the start and you have to make it work yourself. That is the job of a trader. The market is always changing. So you need to be able to adapt to the market and not just jump to the next system once you realize your first losing trade. So really pick one strategy that resonates for you. Pick one strategy that makes sense and then don't deviate from it. Which strategy should you use? That's the question then obviously that comes up. And I have made a video about a breakout buildup. I think this is one of the most helpful beginner strategies. Um, you can check my, my YouTube channel, look for breakout trading and there are a few ones. So what does it mean? You identify uh, support and resistance level here. So after a trend, the market went into a sideways range. And once the trend structure is broken, so once the market is not able to make higher highs and higher lows anymore, you wait for the market to enter a consolidation. And then before the breakout, when you have been able to identify a good support area, you wait for the last bounce. And you can see here the market already started making lower highs and here you have a significantly lower high which is the breakout build up and then you just wait for the the the, the breakout the confirmed breakout and that is often when you tr when new trends are created so it's a very very simple strategy it, it is very very powerful and you can apply this to many charts here another example so the market was in a downtrend the downtrend entered a sideways phase when the downtrend was over you draw your resistance level and then before the breakout, when you see something like that, this is where you should um, get really, really um, cautious. And that's when you should start observing the charts more. And then you simply wait for the confirmed breakout. This is your little build up when the market was not able to pull away at all from the level. This is even something that a few of my students uh, traded, if I remember correctly. So very, very good pattern here has everything going for it. And the breakout buildup is a great strategy for new traders. If you want to learn this strategy, and obviously there's a lot more to it. When do you find your uh, entries? How do you set stops? Um, how do you manage your trades? There is a link in the description below this video where I share my strategies and even more than just one strategy, you get access to eight trading courses uh, at only one price. So this is something very, very new and special that we are offering on Trade Society. So make sure that you check that out if you're interested in taking your trading to the next level. Second tip, beginner tip is pick two time frames. Instead of jumping all around your charts, and I see that many, many amateur traders do that, they just go through all the charts and then they just hunt their setups and their trades. They just hope to stumble over something. You need to be very, very consistent in your, in your chart routine. So what you do is that you pick two time frames and you avoid all the other time frames. This will help you to reduce a lot of noise in your trading and it will help you establish consistency and confidence because you know exactly what you're looking for. The question then obviously is always which time frames do you choose? And this is very, very personal. So I used to trade the daily and the four hour a lot. Um, there are other traders who trade the four hour and the one hour. These days I like to trade the one hour and the 15 minute but in the end anything goes really make sure that you pick a time frame that makes sense to your trading and even more important to your personal situation if you have a day job and you cannot watch your charts during the day then the higher time frames are probably the right fit for you but if you can monitor the lower time frames during the day you have more options and make sure that you pick two time frames write it down and for each question that uh, I go through and for each point that I go through in this video, make sure that you that you write it down and write your answer down. Set up rules and checklists, really, really important. 
I first got the idea of creating my own trading checklist from the, the book from Marty Schwartz, a Pitbull Champion Trader, who is also featured in the Market Wizard series. And he said that even after, I think it was like 20 or 30 years, uh, he's still using a, a physical checklist every day in his trading. And what is your excuse <laughs> to not use a checklist even if such a successful market wizard is using one? Obviously you don't have any and you need to have a checklist. And a checklist is tailored to your own trading style. So whatever your strategy is, um, is, is made up of, that needs to go in your, in your checklist. So it will be very, very individual. And also you can have points in your checklist like, am I on the right time frame? So in the previous, um, point in the previous example, in the previous slide, we identified or we picked two time frames. So make sure that whenever you get into a trade, it's the right time frame. Did you check your news calendar? So you make sure you're not overlooking something. Do you have the right position size? Do you set your stop loss? Is your reward to risk ratio right? Those are all things that can help you avoid obvious mistakes. Four, trading at key levels. I just recently made a video where I break down the current, um, the 11 most important chart levels. And this is very, very important. Instead of chasing the price, when, once you identify it, key price levels, you just let the price come to you. You are not taking trades all over the place, but you're only taking trades at levels where they make sense. So that can increase or may increase your odds of finding better trades significantly. And for that, we use support and resistance and supply and demand. So for example, we look at previous or whenever the market made a previous swing high, then we, we draw a level, we wait for the market to get there. And then you can go to a lower time frame, for example, and then time your trades. Or when resistance turns into support, those are also levels that you can mark on your charts. Um, double bottoms, double tops are very important and significant previous swing highs. They often act as support and resistance in the future. Supply and demand areas um, also work very, very well. So once you have identified a demand area, you just draw it on your charts. You wait for the price to get there and then you go to a lower time frame and then you wait for a trading opportunity into, a tra into, the, into the right direction based on the rules of your trading system. Five sounds very simple, but it's very important. A candle close the sh decisions. So avoid making mid candle decisions. It may reduce a lot of noise from your trading. So what this means is that when you trade the one hour time frame, for example, you are only allowed to make trading decisions at the close of each one hour candle. If you trade a daily time frame, you're only allowed to make trading decisions when the daily candle closes. In TradingView, this is the screenshot from TradingView, you can see the duration underneath the current price of how much time is left for the current candle. So I, I think this was the one hour time frame, and there are 16 minutes and 44 seconds left for this candle to close. And you're only allowed to make a trading decision, which is entering a trade, exiting a trade, managing your trade when the candle is closing. This may help you to avoid fake breakouts. You're not going to exit trades too early. You avoid being emotional and maybe even avoid revenge trading. Try it out. It can help you. Um, it can help you a lot. I've seen it in many with many many traders that I mentor. That this simple rule is responsible for a big big change for many people. Let your winning trades run. That is very important. Even if you pick the best entry, uh, the entry is not going to help you make good trades or find good trades or realize good trades if you cannot let your winning trades run. And for that, for example, what you can use is the, the 50 period tunnel. I made videos about that in the past. Basically, you use two moving averages, both have the 50 um, period setting. One is high and one is applied to the low. And you can see when you have a, have you, when you have a trend or when you're in a trend, let's say you're trading a breakout out of this uh, diagonal head and shoulders or wedge pattern or triangle or whatever you want to call it. You stay in the trade as long as the market is not breaching your tunnel. And this can help you apply a more objective uh, approach to trade management and helps you stay in trades with an objective approach. Here, another example, let's say you are in a breakout uh, trade after this lower bounce here. The lower bounce was triggered here with a breakout and then you stay in your trades as long as the market is not violating the tunnel. This 
I have seen it many, many times. It may help many traders apply and use a more objective trade management approach. And letting winning trades run is one of the most or one of the hardest things that a trader has to deal with. And again, even the highest win rate, even the best entry will not make you money if you are not able to let your winning trades run. Set the right stops, also very, very important. Stops must be protected. Don't set them too close and never trade without a stop. So when we talk about breakouts, for example, on a breakout, you always have a breakout level. So support and resistance level, in this case, a support level. Let's assume you get into a breakout here. This is your entry price. Your stop loss needs to be protected. It needs to be placed at least above the breakout area, not too close above the breakout point. And even better, you can use the last swing high. So you have two levels and two points of protection between the entry price and your stop loss. First, the previous support level that hopefully turns into resistance and the last swing high. And this means that if the market breaches or if the market gets to your stop loss, it has violated two very, very important levels. First, it's it's not going to make um, lower highs anymore if it gets to your stop, which is not good if you are betting on a downtrend. And second, it is also not respecting previous support and resistance. So this is where you protect your stop loss. Here, the other example from the beginning, you have your breakout trade, and this was the, the buildup, and where you put your stop loss is below, first of all, the breakout level, so previous resistance hopefully turns into support and then also below the last swing low. That is where you protect your stops. Eight, realistic reward to risk ratio expectations. It's very, very important to understand that you don't need a very high win rate and you also don't need a high reward to risk ratio. Moritz said it so nicely before that um, there are many traders who have a good trading system, but they ruin it by trying to turn it into a perfect trading system. So it's much, much better to be satisfied with a trading system that has maybe a 60% win rate only and not try to turn it into a trading system that has a win rate of 80 or 90%. Um, and then focusing more on letting your winning trades run. That is usually a much, much easier and safer approach. And when we look at the combination between reward to risk ratio and win rate, we see it right away. So with a reward to risk ratio of one to one, you only need a win rate of around 50% to break even. If you go for a reward to risk ratio of two to one, you only need a win rate of 33% to break even. If you trade maybe with a 40 or 50 or 60% win rate, a two to one reward to risk ratio just based on the math uh, on math is going to make you money long term. This is how math works. So you don't need a high win rate. You don't need um, any really large reward to risk ratio um, numbers. I see many, many traders try to go for a five or a six or a seven reward to risk ratio, but this is um, often a sure way to lose money because the market will, or it's very, very hard to realize such big, um, such big reward to risk ratio trades because you need to stay in trades very, very long. So settle for or be okay and be satisfied with maybe a lower win rate and smaller reward to risk ratios. Your trading will thank you for that. Number nine, consistent position sizing. Inconsistent position sizing skews your results. And I have seen many traders who have a profitable or a potentially profitable system and they still lose money because they size their trades incorrectly. So let's take a look at this five trade sequence. We have five trades, win, loss, loss, win, win. So overall you would average a 60% win rate and the trader is using um, not a consistent position sizing approach. He has 1%, 2%, 2%, and then on his last two, he, he risks a 0.5%. And this is very, very often what happens. You have a winning trade, then you risk more. And then you don't reduce your risk after a losing trade because you wanna make up for the, for the losses. But then you get maybe scared after two losses in a row, and then you only risk 0.5%. This is very, very often um, actually true and what happens for many traders. But when you sum up those results, and if you trade with a two to one reward to risk ratio on your trades, you end up realizing not making any profits. You make 2%, you lose 2%, you lose 2%, and on your last two trades, you make 1% each with a two to one reward to risk ratio. And with a two to one reward to risk ratio, remember what we've seen previously, you only need a win rate of 33%. 
but you have a win rate of 63% of 60%. So you should be making money just based on simple math, but you're not making money because you're inconsistently sizing your positions. You're giving your losses way too much weight and you are undervaluing your winning trades. That's really, really bad. So pick a position sizing level and then make sure to always size your positions the right way. Number 10, review your trades. It's very simple. Ask yourself right now, do you remember your last 10 trades? Do you? Do you really remember your last 10 trades? What did you do right? What did you do wrong? What did you learn from them and what you should have learned from them? And if you don't learn from your mistakes, you're wasting time and money because you're not going to remember even your last 10 trades. And how will you even think about remembering your last 20, 30, 40, 50 trades? It's impossible. So whatever lesson you should learn from your trades, you're not learning them if you only try to remember those, if you're not recording your trades. So losses can only turn into lessons if you learn from them. And my tip is at least if you are not going to start a professional trading journal or any journaling routine, at least start a screenshot collection of your trades. At least save screenshots from your trade entry, from your trade exit. That's the very, very least that you can do. So it is very, very important that you review your trades. And if you want to know more, if you are interested in taking your trading to the next level, we are offering a very, very special uh, offer right now. In, we have a bundle where you can get all of our tra eight trading courses about price action, supply and demand. We have a psychology course, trading as a business and many, many more. Then make sure to check the link in the description below for all the information. We also have a Forex beginner course. If you want to get started, it's all in one package. So you can take your trading to the next level without investing a lot of money. And also make sure to leave a comment below this video if you enjoyed this and if you want to know more beginner trading tips.